to all parties involved to conduct a responsible and serious dialogue in order to resolve all internal conflicts and to work on maintaining unity in ranks at this decisive stage in order to maintain security and stability. This is the approach that all those attending this meeting agree with today in order to achieve peace and security in Yemen and the region. Therefore, we do not think it is appropriate for the Yemeni government to lay the blame for its political and administrative failure on the UAE, because this is based on the concept of offense, offense is the best defense, which has been uh, uh, exemplified in its uh, negative statement today. In closing, the UAE would like to uh, urge all members to focus on the joint objectives in Yemen and to support the efforts of Mr. Martin Griffith in Yemen. I thank you, Madam President. Representative of the United Arab Emirates for his statement. And now I will give the floor to Ms. Nasira Flitti, Charge d'Affaires at interim of the delegation of the League of Arab States to the United Nations. Madam President, at the outset, on, in my personal capacity and on behalf of Mr. Ahmad Abul Ghaita, the Secretary General of the League of Arab States, and on behalf of His Excellency Ambassador Majid Abdel Fattah Abdel Aziz, uh, the permanent observer of the Arab League of the United Nations, on behalf of them all, we'd like to congratulate you on uh, your wise presidency of the Security Council for this month. Moreover, we would like uh, to offer to your delegation, the permanent delegation uh, of uh, Poland, uh, with our ex extreme appreciation for holding this uh, important debate, uh, which uh, deals with issues of uh, the Arab region and the Middle East from a comprehensive perspective. Moreover, we would like uh, to stress the need uh, for or the importance of coordination and cooperation between the Arab League Secretariat with all its different departments on the one hand and the United Nations and all of its relevant bodies and agencies, including your esteemed council, in a manner that serves and bolsters the security, stability and safety of our region. Madam President, our Arab region faces crises and challenges that have security and economic and humanitarian repercussions, dangerous ones, on its residents. Moreover, these repercussions have extended outside the region in some cases. There is no doubt that Arab states are aware of the need to work to confront these crises in a spirit of collective action and responsibility and through arriving at long-term solutions that guarantee dealing with the causes that have led to these crises in the first place. Moreover, the Arab states understand the need to uh, propose solutions that alleviate the suffering of civilians, especially women and children, as a result of civil conflict and fabricated conflict, as well as the attacks of terrorists. In our region, and for several years, these crises and these challenges continue to exist. We see some parties offering help and assistance in different ways. At the same time, we see that some regional organizations and regional parties uh, have taken the opportunity of and used these crises uh, to expand by fanning the flames uh, of uh, violence and extremism. And this interference has destabilized the region and has had dangerous repercussions, most recently on the safety of uh, water passages and international navigation routes. There is no doubt that Iranian interference uh, in the affairs of the Arab region has increased tensions in the area, has prolonged them, and has created even more congestion and extremism in the positions of some. This interference is not benign and must stop because it is a direct violation of a basic principle of the Charter of the United Nations namely the principle of non-interference in the internal affairs of its member states. This has been 
confirmed by the statements and resolutions of Arab summits, the most recent of which uh, was uh, the declaration that was issued by the Mecca summit uh, in May 2019. Arab states, uh, through its regional organization, i.e. the Arab League, Arab states continue to work diligently to resolve the raging conflicts by offering more opportunities for dialogue and by absorbing their dangerous humanitarian repercussions based on the principle that the peoples of our region are well known historically to be peace-loving peoples and peaceful nations. There is no doubt that we all need every constructive effort available by the international community, including your esteemed council, to help us to overcome this difficult stage in our contemporary history. Madam President, the Palestinian question is a central concern for all Arabs here. We are all aware that the situation in the Palestinian territories is deteriorating. The Israeli government has recently announced the construction of 3,000 settlement units in the occupied West Bank. And before that, it demolished 100 residential units belonging to Palestinians in Sur Bahir in East Jerusalem. These Israeli settlements are illegal and are a violation of uh, Security Council Resolution 2334 of the year 2016, a resolution which condemns uh, the settlement, uh, settlement activity and the confiscation of Palestinian land. There is no doubt that the continued construction of these settlements um, in this uh, rabid cancerous manner and outside legitimacy undermines the ability to establish the two-state solution and uh, limits uh, attempts to establish peace in the region. Therefore, your esteemed council is fully responsible for upholding its credibility and its role in conserving and preserving its international status and international rule of law by holding Israel as the occupying power responsible and by holding it accountable for its continuous violation of its resolutions, not to mention its violation of international humanitarian law that prohibits uh, the transference of uh, residents into occupied territories. The international consensus uh, on uh, the Palestinian cause is uh, clear, especially in terms of the two-state solution, which is the only and possible means to end the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. This comes through putting an end to the Israeli occupation of Palestinian territories since 1967, the establishment of an independent Palestinian state in the 4 June 1967 lines with East Jerusalem as its capital. Any attempt to search for solutions to this conflict in a manner that moves away from international legitimacy or is in violation of in legal principles or in a manner that marginalizes uh, the United Nations consensus will not succeed because it will be based uh, on wrongful foundations that believe that military force is the only source of rights. Your esteemed council only recognizes uh, the rule of law and the rule of the logic of law and rights in order to guarantee a sustainable solution. The Arab summit held in Tunisia in March has reaffirmed the importance uh, of an international of a comprehensive and lasting peace in the Middle East uh, as a strategic Arab uh, decision that ha was embodied by the Arab Peace Initiative that was adopted by all Arab states in the Beirut summit of 2002 and which is the most comprehensive uh, plan to deal with all of the final status issues including the issue of the Palestinian of the issue of refugees. Moreover, Arab leaders uh, in that same summit and in their final declaration have reaffirmed uh, their categorical rejection of uh, the recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and uh, they have admit and they stated that uh, East Jerusalem is the capital of uh, the Arab Palestinian state uh, and they have warned of any measures that would change the legal and political status uh, of uh, Jerusalem which would have dangerous repercussions on the peace uh, security and stability of the entire Middle East in closing madam president we would like to renew our deepest gratitude for holding this important meeting. And here I would like uh, to 
and on behalf of the Arab League and the Secretary General to express our extreme appreciation to His Excellency the Secretary General of the United Nations and uh, his uh, team and his envoys in the Arab region to thank them for the efforts that they have been exerting in order to arrive at a final resolution to all the crises there. Thank you again. I thank Ms. Plitti for her uh, statement. And now I give the floor to the permanent observer of the um, observer state of Palestine. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, we congratulate Poland on its presidency and thank the Minister of Foreign Affairs for convening this important debate. I am honored to represent the state of Palestine, joining the other countries of the Middle East in addressing the Security Council and the challenges to peace and security in the Middle East. This matter is urgent as the peoples of the Middle East endure recurrent crises and violent conflicts that are the cause of immense, hu uh, that cause immense human suffering and that threaten international peace and security. At the crux of this situation is the Palestine question, the longest dispute persisting uh, the longest dispute standing issue on the United Nations agenda and the core of the Arab-Israeli conflict. It is impossible to truly examine, understand, and remedy the root causes of the situation in the Middle East without addressing the Palestine question. Attempts to sidestep or downplay the renewous impact on the region of the uprooting of the Palestinian people from their homeland over 70 years ago of more than a half a century of Israeli, Israeli's military occupation and of the ongoing denial and violation of Palestinian rights are misleading and do a disservice to the aim of peace and security in the region. Absent Palestinian-Israeli peace, that goal will remain elusive. Moreover, such attempts to ignore the depths of distrust, anger, and despair that this injustice has sown across the region. It has shaken belief in international law and in the fairness of the international system and continues feeding toxic narratives of double standards, including among youth who comprise the majority of populations across the Arab and Muslim world. Despite persisting hopes and expectations, confidence in the Security Council is in free fall as its efforts to hold violence, uphold international humanitarian law, including to protect civilians, and peacefully resolve conflicts are repeatedly obstructed with Israelis' blatant, long-running defiance of the Council, the most glaring example. No one can deny that Israeli-Palestinian conflict's protraction, chiefly due to a systematic failure to hold Israeli accountable and hold its gross violations in occupied Palestine has cultivated a destructive culture of impunity. This, in turn, has fostered a climate tripe for proliferation of conflict in the region with vast political, social, economic, and security impact, in many cases creating fertile conditions for spread of extremism and terror, as well as religious strife, undermining the potential of religion as a force for social good, tolerance, and coexistence. Here we must again caution against provoking religious conflict in Palestine. Reckless Israeli provocations in occupied East Jerusalem, including daily violations and incitement at al haram sharif by Israeli occupying forces, officials, and religious extremists in disrespect of the historic legal status quo and religious sensitivities at this holy site risk sparking a dangerous religious conflict that must be averted. In this connection, Madam President, we are uh, remembering with horror and pain the incidents that happened 50 years ago this day of attempting to burn Al-Aqsa Mosque and Al-Haram Sharif by extremist settlers, uh, Israelis, that led, among other things, to the creation of the Organization of Islamic Conference. So we do not forget such horrific uh, terrorist uh, incidents by the Israeli occupying authority. 
Tragically, the human cost of this impunity has also been profound, with humanitarian disasters widespread across the region, including as a result of the forced displacement of millions of civilians, among them five and a half million Palestine refugees. And I think that the distinguished ambassador of Kuwait referred to about one third of today's 70 million refugees are in the Arab region and among the 24 million from the Arab region, five and a half million of them for more than 70 years are Palestine refugees. Unchecked, such human ins insecurity, poverty, and misery can only continue to destabilize the region and cause an outflow of this desperate people seeking survival and a, uh, and a, a bitter life for their family, better life for their families as witnessed in the turmoil of the past decades. Madam President, while the conflicts in our region are many and, uh, uh, and are many, and collective political efforts are urgently needed to solve them. We are certain that for forging a secure, peaceful future in the Middle East requires, a, at its core, a just solution to the question of Palestine in line with the international law and the relevant UN resolutions, as many speakers have uh, you know, uh, indicated. The path is well known as long, as long determined by the Council in its resolutions, including Resolution 2334, which clearly called for intensification of international and regional efforts to bring an end to the Israeli occupation that began in 1967 and achieve a comprehensive just and last peace in the Middle East on the basis of the relevant UN resolutions, the Madrid terms of reference, including the principle of land for peace, the Arab Peace Initiative, and the Quartet Roadmap. These are not tired formulas or slogans. They constitute the internationally endorsed basis for a peaceful solution. The problem is not that the Council's resolutions are unrealistic, vague, or unimplementable, as claimed by some. They are wholly realistic, clearly and carefully articulated, with due regard for the international consensus on two-state solution, a solution based on compromise, not extreme absolutes, and due respect for international law and the charter, including the prohibition on acquisition of territory by force. There are some that they come often to this council. They are deaf. They don't want to hear what all of you articulate all the time, that we all know what the solution is, the end of occupation, two-state solution on the border of 1967, in the case of our state, East Jerusalem as its capital, and the just solution to the refugee uh, problem. This is often repeated by all of you, by the Europeans, by the ministers, but some ambassadors who sit here, living in fantasy land, refusing to listen. It's either he is deaf and he should go to a doctor to fix his ears, or he is unable to accept what all of you are articulating as what the solution is, and there is consensus on such basis. The problem is that they have never been given a fair chance to be implemented. The Council's authority has instead been met with flagrant contempt by Israel, the occupying power, which continues entrenching this illegal occupation with its settlement colonization campaign, oppressing the Palestinian people in the most inhumane, cruel ways, and obstructing every credible peace initiative. A permanent member's use of veto has further undermined the council and exacerbated the situation, blocking any attempt to compel a halt to the occupation's crimes and peacefully resolve the conflict. Madam President, this is the dilemma that the international community continues to face in the region and overcoming the many serious challenges we face requires addressing this central issue. There is no military solution to this conflict or any other conflict in our region. Likewise, imposition of unjust solution, such as the deal of the deals, 
or the deal of the century is not peacemaking and will fail. With more massive political, security, economic, social, and human costs, what is needed is the immediate mobilization of the political will to implement the Security Council's resolutions on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. We remain committed to the path of peace and to negotiations based on the relevant resolutions aimed at achievement of a peace agreement that resolves all final status issues and realizes the Palestinian people's inalienable rights, including to self-determination and a life of freedom and dignity in an independent and sovereign state of Palestine with East Jerusalem as its capital living side by side in peace with the state of Israel within secure internationally recognized borders based on the 1967 lines and a just solution for the Palestine refugees based on Resolution 194 and the Arab Peace Initiative. We reiterate our call for a multi lateral political process based on the long-standing parameters and within a set time frame and reaffirm our readiness to engage, including in an international peace conference. We urge the Security Council to act and call also on the quartet members in line with their council mandate to exert serious efforts to this end in cooperation with all concerned regional partners, the League of Arab States, and all peace-loving nations. Only through such a collective drive for peace can we justly resolve the Palestine question, establish Israeli-Palestinian peace, and truly contribute to peace and security in the Middle East, so essential for a more just, stable, and peaceful world. With your indulgence, Madam President, I just want to take two, uh, one minute to respond to, uh, uh, to certain assertions that are false before you from a speaker who spoke not too long ago. That speaker, according to the Israeli media before he came to the UN, had a reputation as being a big liar in Israel. Tonight, and in many other occasions before, he proved that he is truly living up to the reputation that gave him and the characterization by the Israeli media. He is not, he is trying to tell you, of course, you know, he is not succeeding, that we did not make a, com a historical compromise of accepting to have a, Palestinian st a Palestine state on 22% of historic Palestine, which is less than what is available to us according to Resolution 181. So that is a lie that we do not want to have peace and to have two-state solution. On the other hand, the government that he represents, which is the most extreme in the history of governments in Israel, is creating a reality of one state apartheid reality in historic Palestine. So who is destroying the global consensus in having two states? Is it the Palestinian leadership that he attacks falsely? and lies against them? Or is it the extreme Israeli government of occupation that is destroying any hope of peace based on the global consensus that all of you agreed to and reflected in many Security Council resolutions? And also, I challenge that liar to say, if he accepts the implementation of Security Council resolution on that conflict, we do, as you do. And we ask, as the German ambassador said not too long ago, Security Council resolutions are part of international law, and they need to be implemented, and that's based on your charter responsibility to make sure that they should be implemented. So that this deaf man is not listening to this message that you keep repeating and repeating and repeating, and yet he is choosing not to listen to it. Another lie, he is living in fantasy land that he is opening the doors for normalization with the Arab countries. All the Arab countries who spoke, including the representative of the League of Arab States, reiterated their commitment, including the representative of Bahrain, whom he referred to the statement of his foreign minister, the foreign minister of Bahrain. 
all of them repeated that they are still committed to uh, the just cause of, the, of Palestine and to the Peace Arab Initiative and to its implementation. So he can listen to whatever noise there is in his head. He is refusing to listen to the Security Council members, and yet he comes and abuse the privilege that you provide him in listening to his statements, and there is a requirement for all of us when we come and speak, we respect the Security Council and work for the implementation of the resolutions of the Security Council. And I thank you very much, Madam President. I thank the permanent observer of the observer state of Palestine for his statement. And now I give the floor to the representative of Qatar. Uh, Thank you, Madam President. At the outset, I should like to thank you for having convened this meeting, a meeting to address those challenges vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, in the face of the peace and security in the Middle East. Today's meeting sheds light on mounting challenges in the Middle East, as well as uh, the vital importance of achievement of stability in that critical part of the world. This requires a convergence of efforts for there to be cooperation, for wisdom to prevail, as well as for the language of dialogue to prevail so as to prevent a relapse into conflicts that may jeopardize international peace and security. Madam President, a peaceful and fair settlement to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is of critical importance to achieve peace in the Middle East. This requires all parties respect their obligations under international law and uh, the benchmarks and guidelines set out by the international community, including respect for the two states' uh, principle, uh, acknowledgement of Palestine as an independent state within the 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital on the basis of the relevant Security Council resolutions and the Arab Peace Initiative. Furthermore, it is necessary for Israel to cease its occupation of all of the occupied Arab uh, territory and for Israel to cease all settlement activities immediately. It is further necessary to deliver international protection for the Palestinian people and for the refugees to be able to return to their homes as well as for the Palestinian people uh, to enjoy their inalienable rights. Madam President, the link between conflict and crises plaguing the Middle East and the direct uh, implications on security and stability in the region require urgent action to be taken and effective initiatives to be embraced to achieve peace in Syria, Libya, and in Yemen. The Middle East, despite its considerable resources, despite the needs uh, to guarantee prosperity and development for the people there, instead of cooperating uh, to settle crisis and conflict and to root out terrorism and extremism, instead of all of this, there are other tremendous challenges that are ubiquitous. And these imperil the stability of the regional a security system, and uh, I refer to the Gulf Cooperation Council in this regard, which has uh, significantly contributed to the maintenance of regional and international peace and security. Achievement of a lasting peace in the Middle East requires uh, an abandonment of uh, threats, violations of state sovereignty. It, this require uh, an abandonment of the stoking of artificial crises to achieve illegitimate aims. At a time when our region is experiencing tumult, which represents a peace to international, uh, a threat to international peace and security, the imposition of an illegal 
embargo on Qatar. The embargo has entered into its third year now. This contributes to regional instability. This undermines the efforts undertaken by this august body. This illegal embargo and the damage wrought by it is not limited to Qatar and states in the region. This represents a serious precedent uh, as a grave breach of international law and the principles of cordial relations amongst states and the breach of the United Nations Charter, which requires that states refrain from escalating conflict and invites states to settle disputes through dialogue and peaceful means. We welcome this opportunity to reaffirm the position of the state of Qatar. We support dialogue to resolve conflicts, and we reiterate our support and our gratitude in the light of efforts that have been undertaken by Sher Sabah Ahmad Ajab Al Sabah, the Emir of the State of uh, Qatar. Madam, cybersecurity is a tremendous challenge. Indeed, when this is used uh, with ill will, it destabilizes uh, international and regional security. The world bore witness to cyber attacks, and uh, the state of Qatar is among these among the victims. Lack of uh, institutions and international rules to govern this extremely important realm. The lack of rules to ensure accountability for perpetrators requires that robust measures be undertaken and to ensure that there be full accountability for the crimes and consequences thereof. We have closely and attentively been following recent uh, developments in the Strait of Hormuz and the uh, incidents regarding to uh, regard related to regional international navigation there is a need to uh, to address these incidents expeditiously we will call upon all parties to exercise restraint we call for efforts to be undertaken to achieve a positive and a peaceful solution madam president the state of qatar uh, has undertaken numerous initiatives these reflect our commitment with uh, the international community uh, to strengthen understanding and dialogue uh, to advance the premises of tolerance, cooperation, and the fight against terrorism. The state of Qatar is among the largest donors to the United Nations Office of Counterterrorism. Furthermore, institutions of the state of Qatar have uh, striven to provide education for 10 million children in more than 50 states. Many are in areas plagued by conflict and poverty, as well as natural disasters. With respect to, to Qatari uh, educational institutions and in cooperation with UNICEF, as well as the other UN bodies, these efforts have been undertaken. To conclude, we reaffirm our commitment to working hand in hand with our partners under the international system to tackle shared challenges and in support of the Security Council mandate to guarantee international peace and security. Thank you. Representative of Qatar for his statement. And now I give the floor to the representative of Lebanon. Thank you. Uh, President, uh, before I start, I would really like to thank you and thank everybody around the table who was patient and waited for us to give our statements. I know we are holding you from your dinner, so I will be, hopefully I will be fast. Uh, I would like also to thank uh, the high-level visitors, Secretary of State, uh, Mr. Pompeo, for his briefing and his coming here, uh, the Sec State Secretary of the German uh, Republic, Mr. Michaelis, and the uh, statement by the Chef de Cabinet for the SG, uh, Mrs. Viotti. Madam President, in the 20 it is the 20th of August, supposedly the calmest month here, and the Council has held no less than 11 meetings over Middle East issues thus far. This is a mirror of the increasing challenges as well as the alarming deterioration of the security and humanitarian situation in many parts of our region. The situation in the Palestinian occupied territories is suffering from multiple challenges, or rather deficits. 
political deficit in the form of an absence of a credible peace effort and the challenge to bring about a just solution. An economic deficit where the financial and economic situation of the Palestinian people is desperate. A humanitarian deficit where the needs of the Palestinians under occupation and the refugees outside are so enormous that's leading to the alarming deficit in security for Palestinians everywhere. A deficit in the respect for international law, international humanitarian law, and human rights law. But the worst deficit that the Palestinians are suffering from now is the deficit of hope. The Israeli policy of continuing to create, create facts on the ground is depriving them of an independent and sovereign future to live in peace and dignity. The most glaring examples of the challenges are the continuing Israeli expansion of the settlements and the continued unlawful confiscation and demolition of Palestinian homes and the Israeli violations of the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the third holiest in Islam. These actions are heightening the tension in the occupied territories, the region, and the Muslim world. The holy sites should be respected and their sanctity preserved. It is the responsibility of this organization and this council to make sure that United Nations resolutions, the Geneva Conventions, and international law are respected in this regard. UNRWA is living an existential crisis. As a major host country, Lebanon is very concerned about the implications of this crisis on Palestinian refugees and host communities. While commending the countries that provided much needed financial contributions, Lebanon calls on the international community to find a sustainable solution to UNRWA's financial ordeal. Lebanon reiterates the Secretary General's strong conviction that there, is no, that there is no plan B for the Palestinian-Israeli issue. There is one way out of this intractable com conflict, a just and comprehensive peace, peace based on United Nations resolutions, the right of self-determination, the 1967 borders, the Arab Peace Initiative, a two-state solution that gives rise to a Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital. The absence of such settlement condemns the whole region to a continuous conflict and bloodshed. Madam President, despite of these difficult times, Lebanon succeeded in ensuring its internal security, stability, and is putting itself on the path of an economic recovery. Prime Minister Saad Hariri reiterated a few days ago Lebanon's dedication to advancing key initiatives in the government's reform agenda such as the Sadr Conference and the Capital Investment Plan, which are essential to the revival of the Lebanese economy and to bolster security and stability for Lebanon and the region. On the peace and security issue, the government is doing its best to maintain Lebanon's stability and security, especially on its southern border, with the help of the international community and the United Nations. The Lebanese government expressed its commitment to promptly develop a plan to enhance the naval capabilities of the Lebanese Armed Forces, the LAF, in accordance with the Resolution 2433. But this situation remains fragile as long as Israel continues its occupation of Lebanese territories in South Lebanon and its territorial waters. Lebanon is committed to conflict resolution and sought the good offices of the United States in a process to find such a solution. Prime Minister Hariri confirmed last week to Secretary of State Mr. Pompeo Lebanon's commitment to continuing the negotiation process concerning the land and maritime borders. He called the process vital for Lebanon and viable. The Prime Minister vowed to continue to support the constitutional next step leading up to a final decision in the coming months, hopefully in September. The Prime Minister reaffirmed Lebanon's commitment to Resolution 1701 and its readiness to move from cessation of hostilities to a ceasefire under a United Nations mechanism. But for that to happen, the Prime Minister emphasized, Israel has to implement its part of the resolution. Contrasting the, this Lebanese commitment to 1701, Israel continues its daily violations of Lebanese sovereignty with impunity. These violations have taken a dangerous turn because Israel is continuing to use Lebanese airspace to conduct military operations against Syria. The latest such operation from Lebanese airspace happened on July 1st 
when nine Israeli military jets breached the Beni sovereignty to launch a rocket attack on Syria. Madam President, the renewal of UNIFIL's mandate is upon us in a few days. The Foreign Minister of Lebanon, Mr. Gibran Basile, in a letter to the Council members, expressed Lebanon's, quote, strong support to the existing UNIFIL mandate and its full commitment to the implementation of United Nations Security Council Resolution 1701 in its entirety, including the withdrawal of Israeli forces from the Lebanese-occupied territories, the Kfarshuba Hills, Shaba Farms, and the northern part of the Ghajar village without further delay, end of quote. Lebanon applauds the dedication and professionalism of UNIFIL's peacekeepers, staff, and leadership, and its continued cooperation with the LAF. Lebanon is grateful for the support of the troop contributing countries and highly values their efforts and sacrifices. UNIFIL is doing a formidable job in maintaining stability in the South, and we hope that its makeup, mandate, and role are renewed in a spirit of understanding of the important role of this peacekeeping mission and of the challenges in the area. I thank you. I thank the representative of Lebanon for her statement. And now I give the floor to the representative of Jordan. Shukran Sayyid Rais. Thank you, Madam President. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me at the outset to congratulate Poland on your presidency of the Council this month. I'd also like to congratulate you on holding this important meeting relating to the challenges facing the Middle East and the um, need for security. I also would like to thank the chef de cabinet for her briefing. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen, the world today is facing a number of challenges which uh, call upon the international community to mobilize in order to face them collectively and in a sustainable way in order to ensure that we can radically address uh, the cause uh, the, of these challenges, the most serious of them affecting international peace and security. Very many agree that the Middle East is being held hostage to these political, economic, and uh, security uh, challenges, crises which continue because of social injustice and um, ethnic clashes which have uh, permitted the forces of evil to um, bring about uh, death, destruction and terrorism. We meet today as events in the Middle East are increasing in tension a long way away from stability and the and um, Palestine remains at the center of this uh, region, but there's no progress uh, being made. The greatest challenge facing our region, Madam President, is uh, the need for peace and stability in general, uh, and also an end to the uh, Israeli occupation of the Palestinian territory. Um, the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan um, has met its responsibilities in this regard. This is our central raison d'etre. And this is in line with the vision of our Palestinian and Arab brothers and sisters. We have supported and will continue to support the peaceful, um, a peaceful settlement um, to bring about a lasting resolution to the Palestinian conflict based on the solution of two states. This would lead to the creation of an independent, viable Palestinian state within the 4th of June 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. Uh, according to the Arab Peace Initiative, which is the uh, uh, unified Arab uh, Islamic uh, position in order to bring about lasting peace. This is the only guarantee for peace and stability in the Middle East. In this regard, we must recall that uh, His Majesty uh, Abdullah bin Hussein has warned more than once that the slowing of efforts to bring peace will lead the region into difficult times, and it's very important that everyone assume their responsibilities to ensure that we bring about lasting, sustainable peace. Madam President, Jordan has always uh, called for peace and brotherliness uh, amongst peoples. 
um, given linguistic, religious, cultural differences, the uh, city of peace, Jerusalem, is at the top of our list of priorities and of the Hashemite kingdom. And given our res religious responsibilities as the historic guarantors of the holy uh, Muslim and Christian sites in Jerusalem, um, that responsibility is also uh, part of our duty to the Arab and Muslim world. Uh, and so Jordan has no other choice than to oppose practices that will have a negative effect on our identity and existence and on peace and uh, the future of stability itself. I'm talking about the repeated Israeli violations against the Al-Aqsa Mosque and Haram al-Sharif. The last violation um, was against worshippers and, and uh, administrators of the Waqf. We um, would completely reject these practices and these unilateral attempts to change the historic and legal uh, status of the city. We call upon the international community to take measures to apply pressure to Israel to ensure that it respects international law and international humanitarian law. Madam President, the schools which provide education to Palestinians, the centers that provide them with uh, health and social services have to remain open. The families of Palestinian refugees uh, need uh, support. Up until such time as their status as refugees uh, disappears by us finding a just resolution to the Palestinian conflict, therefore there needs to be continuing funding of UNRWA so that the agency is able to implement uh, the mandate that it was given by the General Assembly. We moreover reaffirm the need to pursue uh, the international political and financial support for UNRWA so that the agency um, does not find itself on the long list of victims uh, due to a lack of collective action to bring peace to the Middle East. Madam President, the Kingdom of Jordan, since the beginning of the crisis in Syria, has tried to bring about a peaceful solution to the crisis to avoid this country and its people uh, suffering a further destruction and death and displacement and humanitarian effects and to put an end to the suffering of the uh, brotherly nation of Syria according to resolutions 2139 and 2165. The Kingdom has constantly called for a pe peaceful settlement of the crisis through the Geneva process and on the basis of resolution 2254, a resolution that would be accepted by the Syrian people and that would preserve the unity and sovereignty of Syria. Jordan is proud to be one of the first states to uh, receive refugees in the Middle East um, on behalf of the international community. Jordan has had to deal with the effects of these waves of uh, refugees which has meant that uh, we have needed uh, assistance in order to alleviate uh, this, this burden caused uh, by the uh, wave of refugees, particularly given the social and economic uh, situation for Jordan. I would like in this regard to thank our regional and international and UN partners. Madam President, uh, UNICEF recently said that there were 15 million children in the MENA area uh, that uh, are not uh, going to school, and uh, this will lead to illiteracy and ignorance and a lack of hope and opportunities for development. Uh, it will lead to despair, and it will be fertile ground for um, extremism and recruitment to extremism. Uh, so we should work together in order to address these challenges and to ensure that uh, we can um, provide everyone with a future that they want. In order for coexistence and for there to be stability in the world, we need to recognize the need to offer 
uh, hope and opportunity for sustainable global development. We need plans to do this, to improve infrastructure, to improve education, uh, to uh, give greater freedoms to women and young people, to guarantee security, provide employment, energy supply, and uh, also address climate change. In conclusion, I would like to reaffirm that Jordan will continue to play its uh, political and diplomatic role regionally and internationally, basing ourselves on moderation and mutual respect. Uh, bringing peace to the Middle East will be the main, main priority of our foreign policy until such time as all r rights and territory has been restored to the Palestinians until the independent Palestinian state has been created with East Jerusalem as its capital. We now need to create lasting peace for future generations. I thank you. I would like to thank all participants for staying almost till 8 o'clock. I thank you for your valuable contribution to our today discussion. And I announce that there are no more names inscribed of the list of speakers. So the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.